When calculus teachers don't think the question is hard enough. So here's the solution. Look at this right here. We have sine x and then raised to a sine x power in this parentheses and then raised to a sine x power, right? In fact, we can just multiply this power and that power together. And the idea is like this. Let me give you guys an example. Remember when we have 2 to the third power, right? Just an example. In the parentheses and then raised to another power, let's say to the fourth power, what can we do? Just multiply the powers together and we get 2 to the 12th power, right? So let's go ahead and do the same thing right here. And we will just get the derivative of the top is just sine x for the base. And then we do this times that power, which is sine squared x power. And then over ln x. Yeah. In fact, if we didn't have the parentheses right there, then the question is going to be so much worse. Because if you look at this right here, let's say we have 2 to the 3rd to the 4th like this. This actually means that we will have to do 3 to the 4th power first, and then 2 to that power after that. And this is going to be so much worse than this right here, right? So thanks to this parentheses, that is a little bit better. All right, what can we do next though? Quotient rule? Yeah, but you see, we have a function to a function power. So let's rewrite the sine x right here as follows. Check this out. We are going to have the derivative right here. We like to have base e. We do not like to have base sine x. So put the sine x as e raised to the ln of sine x power. Because this way, this and that can cancel. And we just get the sine x back, right? And you see, we still have this raised to the sine squared power. So what do we do? This times that. So let me just put this down right here, sine square x right here. And then again, they are multiplying. And don't forget, we still have to divide it by this guy, right, ln x. And now, let me show you guys the biggest quotient rule question right here. Of course, we can also do the logarithmic uh, differentiation in the beginning, but I really just want to do quotient rule. I don't know why, but anyway, yeah, I'm not even kidding. We need to have a fraction bar this long. On the bottom, yes, all we have to do is just square the denominator. If you remember to do this, you are 50% done, right? Of course, that's a lie for this question, but uh, I just want to say that to make you guys feel better. Anyway, here we go. We are going to put the bottom function right here. So we start with ln x, and we are going to multiply by the derivative of the top. All right, the derivative top first, this thing right here repeats. e to that power is the same as just that. So let me just write it as sine x raised to the sine squared x power. And then what do we do? Yes, of course, the chain do. We have to multiply by the derivative of this. And in fact, to do the derivative right here, we will have to use the product rule and then more chain do, right? Okay, let's just go ahead and do it. So I'm going to keep the first function, which is sine squared x, and we are going to multiply by the derivative second ln of this, which is just going to be 1 over sine x. And here is the chain rule again, multiplied by the derivative right there, which is going to be cosine x. And then right here, we are going to add the second function, which is ln of sine x, and we multiply by the derivative of the first. We'll put a 2 to the front, so we have 2, and then the inside stays the same. And then use the chain rule again, multiply by the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. All right. <laughs> and then what else do we do? Well, remember that for the quotient rule, we will have to subtract, right? So we minus, and we are going to look at the top function, which is just that, which is the same as that. So let me just put that down. We have sine x, and then raised to the sine squared x power. And we multiply by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1 over x. Cool. Now, let me tell you guys the good news. This and that cancel out. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I know, I know. Really cool, huh? And um, we have 1 over x. Usually, we do not like to have complex fractions. So, we would like to just multiply everybody by x. So that we can fix the complex fraction situation. 
So here is the x and then x. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor this out all the way in the front. So here we have sine x raised to the sine square x. And then for the first part, I'm going to take this times that and then distribute it to here. So I'm going to put down x and then let me put down the sine x and then cosine x and then lastly we have the ln x. And then I will take this and that, distribute it to here and let me put this down right here first. And notice that this right here is actually what? Sine of 2x, right? The double angle identity. So if you would like, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and put down plus. We have just sine of 2x here. And then here we have the x, so let's put that down. And then next we have this ln x. And then lastly we have the ln of sine x. Yeah. And in fact, if you would like, you can also write this down as one half of sine of 2x. But if you have the one half, you get a little complex fraction, so let me not do that. <laughs> here, and of course this is factored out already, so we just have minus. And of course, this x and that x cancel, and that's it. Because this ln x is only for the blue part right here, right? So we just have to minus 1. <laughs> okay, and then, yeah, and I shouldn't put the parentheses right here, I should put the parentheses right there for everything on the top and ladies and gentlemen all this divided by x times ln of x and then square that let me just double check triple check and i think this right here will do it um Yeah, this right here is it. I told you it's not so bad, right? Not really, but like, yeah, I told you it's not so bad, right? <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. That's it.